Hello everyone, this is Pinay Nurse. For this video, we'll be taking up coding and thematic analysis. So you have gathered qualitative data. Now it's time to analyze them using coding and thematic analysis. Well, coding and thematic analysis seem to be such big terms, but don't be intimidated. I'm very sure you have done something like this before, even if it's your first time to do qualitative research. And you might be thinking, really? How could that happen? I assure you, it has happened. So let me illustrate this with an example using an everyday life scenario. Your room is a big mess. All of your clothes are on your bed. You have two closets, but they don't contain any clothes at all. Your room looks like this. So you went through its article of clothing to identify them. But this time, you went beyond identifying them in your mind. Instead, you made labels and attached them to the articles of clothing. So you now have shorts, and this shirts, pants, jackets, etc. All of it have labels attached to them. And after labeling them, you put all of the shirts together, all of the undies together, all of the pants together, etc. Now your room is looking much better, but you're not done yet. You have to put your clothes in the closets. So you decided to sort them into two piles, one pile for inner clothes and one for outer clothes. The pile of inner clothes contains underwear and nothing else. On the other hand, the pile of outer clothes contains all the rest. So you looked at it and said, no, this won't work. The whole closet just for my undies? No. And you thought and thought and thought. And at last, an idea. You decided that into one closet, the clothes that are worn above the waist will go. These are blouses, shirts, and jackets. Into the other closet, the clothes that are worn below the waist will go. These are underwear, shorts, and pants. So you did that, and the task is done, and you are now satisfied. Qualitative data analysis is just like that. First, you label the data. That is coding. Next, you sort and organize the data. That is thematic analysis. So if you can label and organize your clothes, then you can do qualitative data analysis. So what are we waiting for? Let's do qualitative data analysis. Let's start with coding. Coding is labeling your data with a word or a short phrase. Why do you want to label your data? It is so that you will know immediately what the data is all about. You don't need to read an entire paragraph of the participant's interview. Just read the code instead. So let's see an example. You're studying the childering beliefs and practices of the Ibalois. This is an ethnographic research. You have collected data to an unstructured interview. After its interview, create a transcript file ASAP. Create two columns in your transcript file. The wider column is for the interview transcription and the narrower column is for the code. Let's see how coding is done. Participant A says, spare the rod and spoil the child. That's what I believe in. Better hurt the child a bit rather than letting him grow without discipline. Code is spare the rod and spoil the child. This is a label that is short but it captures the thought of the participant's words. You may choose to use the actual participant's words or you may choose to condense it using your own words. Participant A says, that's why I spank my child. I hit his palm with my soft leather belt three times when he misbehaves. Code is spanks child. Participant A continues, but I also believe that severe physical punishment is abuse. I consider it severe when it already causes injury. Code is severe physical punishment is abuse. Participant A says, if the misbehavior is light, I use timeout. I let him face the wall for five minutes. Code uses timeout. You ask, so far you have talked about child discipline. What about the other aspects of raising him? And participant A answers, oh, I gave him a variety of food so that he will be healthy. Meat, fish, vegetables, and fruits. Code gives a variety of food. And participant A continues, I believe that good food is expensive, but I don't mind spending for my child. Code Good food is expensive. Participant A says, I give him lots and lots of food. I guess more than what he needs. That's why he's so fat, but he's cute anyway. Code overfeeds child. You as the interviewer ask, what can you say about the fact that he is overweight? And participant A answers, well, a fat child is a healthy child. Code, a fat child is a healthy child. And participant A continues, 
issues. By the way, I forgot to tell you, I also discipline my child by getting his phone when he misbehaves. No games for him for a few hours. No TV too. And the code is suspense screen time privilege. Do this for the whole interview and for all of the interviews of the different participants. And proceed to these next steps. First, copy-paste all of the codes onto a blank page. Second, review the code so that similar verbalizations of the participants will have the same code. For example, if you have these codes, Spang child and his child, they are very similar, so edit one so that they will have the same label, such as Spang's child. If you have these codes when a child misbehaves, takes away phone, no TV, no computer games, instead of having three different codes, then you may use a single code which is suspense screen time privilege. When you make these changes, edit both the list of codes and the transcript file. Why do you need to do so? Editing the list of codes is important so that you limit the number of codes that you have there. You are streamlining the list so that it's going to be easier for you to do thematic analysis. You edit the transcript file so that later on, when you need to search for a particular excerpt, it will be easier for you to do so by simply by typing in the code in the find function of Microsoft Word and you will be able to locate particular excerpts more easily. Now, let's see the list of codes. What I have here is a list of codes from a single interview only. In an actual research, you're going to have much, much more than this. But for illustration purposes, let's use this. The codes are spare the rod and spoil the child, Spunk's child, severe physical punishment is abuse, uses time out, gives child a variety of food, good food is expensive, overfeeds child, a fat child is a healthy child, and suspends screen time privilege. Now you're ready for thematic analysis wherein you organize the codes into themes. But first, let's see the different approaches to deriving themes. First is the deductive approach. Here we start from general to specific. The inductive approach is the opposite, start from specific to general. And for the hybrid approach, this is combination of inductive and deductive approaches. Let's see an example of the hybrid approach. In this research, the initial type of analysis used is the deductive approach followed by the inductive one. In the research, the child reading beliefs and practices of the Ibalois, we can use two general categories for the initial sorting of codes. These categories are already predetermined because if you look at the title of the research, you are studying beliefs and practices. Therefore, the categories that we'll be using are beliefs and practices. We have already determined the broadest categories, beliefs and practices. Now, let's organize the codes. First, spare the rod and spoil the child. What is it? That is a belief. Spang child? That is a practice. Severe physical punishment is abuse? That is a belief. Uses time out is practice. Gives child a variety of foods, that's also practice. Good food is expensive, that is a belief. Overfeed child is practice. A fat child is a healthy child, that is a belief. And suspense screen time privilege, that is a practice. These are the broadest or general themes or categories and the codes under them. So under beliefs, spare the rod and spoil the child. Severe physical punishment is abuse, a fat child is a healthy child, good food is expensive. Under practices, spanks child, uses time out, gives child a variety of food, overfeeds child, and suspends screen time privilege. After the deductive approach of organizing goes into the general themes, shift to the inductive approach. Look at the codes again, group codes that pertain to a certain topic together. This way you are organizing them into themes. This will be the sub-themes under the general themes. So, you are looking for patterns. You are looking for similarities. What are they? So, using the inductive approach, ask yourself, what is each code about? Under beliefs, spare the rod and spoil the child. It's talking about discipline, right? Next, severe physical punishment is abuse. That's also about discipline. Next, good food is expensive. That is about feeding. A fat child is a healthy child, that is also about feeding. Under practices, spank child, that is about discipline. Uses time out, this is also discipline. Giving child a variety of food is feeding. 
overfeed child is of course feeding and suspends screen time privilege is discipline. Now that we have identified what the codes are about, then we put similar codes together. This will be the sub-themes under the broadest or general themes, which are the beliefs and practices. So under beliefs, we have beliefs on discipline and beliefs on feeding. Under practices, we have practices on discipline and practices on feeding. A variation of thematic analysis is based on color coding. These are the initial steps. Highlight similar verbalizations with one color. Then use another color for another group of similar verbalizations. Let's go back to the transcript file, but this time let's focus on the codes. What we'll be doing first is to categorize the codes into beliefs or practices. And I have chosen to use blue highlight for beliefs and a black highlight for practices. Spare the rod and spoil the child as a first code. That is a belief, so that will be blue. Spanx child is a practice, so that's black. Severe physical punishment is abuse, then that's a belief, so it is blue. Continue with the rest of the codes. Uses time out is a practice, so that's black. Gives a variety of foods is a practice, so it's black. Good food is expensive, that's a belief, so it is highlighted blue. Overfeeds child is a practice, so that's black. A fat child is a healthy child that is a belief, so it's blue, and suspends screen time privilege is a practice, so it's black. Now we go back to the transcript file and focus on the code and re-examine what is the code all about. Spare the rod and spoil the child has been previously labeled as blue because it is a belief. But I know that the code is also about discipline, and I have chosen pink as the code for discipline. So now, spare the rod and spoil the child is a combination of blue and pink. Spank the child is a combination of black and pink, black for practice, and pink for discipline. Severe physical punishment is abuse as a combination of blue and pink, blue for belief, and pink for discipline. Use this time out, black for practice, pink for discipline. Gives a variety of food, it's black for a practice, and this time for feeding, I've chosen gold. So this is black and gold. Good food is expensive. Blue because it's a belief. And gold for feeding. Overfit child, black for practice. Gold for feeding. A fat child is a healthy child. Blue for belief. Gold for feeding. Suspense screen time privilege. Black for practice. Pink for discipline. Using the color as guides, put similar codes together. Now you have the sub-themes under the broadest or general themes. These are beliefs, under which you have beliefs on discipline and beliefs on feeding. And you have practices under which you have practices on discipline and practices on feeding. Now let's see another example. The research question is, what are the live experiences of adolescents who have been bullied? But before we proceed, if you have not clicked the subscribe button, please do so now. Thank you. Just like for the previous example, create two columns in your transcript file. A wider column is for the interview transcription and a narrower one is for the code. Example, participant says, what did the bully do to me? One time, she punched me on the nose. That bled a lot. Another time, she tripped me and I fell. She pulled my hair. She pricked me with a pushpin. She slammed me against the door. Code being physically hurt. She called me fat, so ugly face, dumb dumb, and she said all this when there was an audience of other students. Code is name calling. One time she taped a piece of paper on my back. It read, I love blank, referring to the captain of the basketball team. He's my fantasy. Code, humiliating prank. When the bully hit me, I was so angry with her. How dare she hurt me? I was just minding my own business, not doing anything to her. Code, anger to bully. But I was even more angry with myself. Why am I allowing this bully to do that? Why can't I even stand for myself and fight back? Code, anger to self. I was afraid. What will she do next? What will happen to me? Code, fear. When she hit me, I got my plastic tumbler out of my bag and hit her squarely on the face with it. Code, hitting back. I wrote a letter to the principal reporting what the bully has done. I also asked the other victims to sign the letter. I did not know that the principal was her aunt. Code reporting to authority. 
I decided to get even. One time when she left her bag in the classroom, I got the requirement that she was supposed to submit in the next class. I hid it, of course. The teacher did not believe her Aribai. Code stating the Buddhist things. Another time, I poured water into her bag. That dummy's her brand new phone. She was so angry. She accused me, but she did not have any evidence. Code destroying the Buddhist things. I saw to it that when the bully was there, I was always with friends, never alone. I felt safer with my friends around. Code, being with friends. Every time I see her, I go to the other side of the campus. If she does not see me, then she can't bully me. Code, avoiding. Often I daydream that I was strong and no one can bully me. In my daydreams, I was a hero saving others from bullies. Code, fantasizing. So these are the codes, being physically hurt, name-calling, humiliating prank, anger to self, anger to the bully, fear of the bully, stealing the bully's things, destroying the bully's things, hitting back, reporting to authority, being with friends, avoiding the bully, and fantasizing. So we made our list of codes. Now let's proceed to thematic analysis, and this time let's use inductive analysis. Let us examine what each code is about. Being physically hurt, that is a bullying act experienced by the participant. Name calling is another bullying act. Humiliating prank is another bullying act. Anger to self is a feeling of the participant related to the bullying act. Anger to the bully is another feeling and fear of the bully is another feeling. Stealing the bully's things is a response. Destroying the bully's things is another response. Hitting back, reporting to authority, being with friends, avoiding the bully, fantasizing, all of these are responses. Now that you have identified what the codes are about, then organize your codes into themes. There are three themes, bullying acts, feelings, and responses. We may do a further clustering of the themes under responses. If you look at the themes under responses, you would note that there are similarities. There are patterns. So, Group the similar themes together, and now you can have a sub -theme. So under this, getting even, which will include hitting back, stealing the bullish things, and destroying the bullish things. Another sub -theme is seeking others, which includes being with friends and reporting to authority. And another theme is escaping, which includes avoiding the bully and fantasizing. So what have we done so far? We have identified the codes, we have sorted them, and we have identified the themes and sub-themes. Now, you also have the option of renaming your themes. Remember, the name of our theme is Bullying Acts. I have decided to rename it as How I Was Bullied. For feelings, I have decided to use the theme of How I Felt. And for responses, I use now the name of how I responded. So we have three themes, how I was bullied, how I felt, and how I responded. Under how I responded, we have getting even, seeking others, and escaping. So is this the end? Yes, you may end here, but you can proceed further. Look for patterns again. How I was bullied referred to the bullying acts experienced by the participants, and this elicited feelings. So, we can put an arrow connecting the bullying acts or how I was bullied to the feelings or how I felt. The feelings in turn led to the responses of the participants. So, we can put an arrow to the responses leading from how I felt. So, we can see now that with these arrows, there's a more comprehensive picture, not just a completion of the themes, but how they relate to one another. So this is how you do coding and thematic analysis. I hope this video has helped you. Please hit the subscribe button if you have not done yet. Thank you very much.